Hi, this is the second video for uh, test prep, and uh, for this video I want to talk a little bit about the Atlantic slave trade. Um, so the topic that was covered by group two was covered really well. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff there. This is a huge topic, uh, lots of different ways it can go, but there's a couple things that I want to make sure you guys are prepared for when we do when we go for the test. Um, there were two primary things that you were to look at for this unit. There was the reading in Collins, and there was the lecture by David Brian Davis that is in the topic intro page. It's a little bit long, it's a little bit slow, but it's full of some really interesting information. Let's talk about some of the Collins material first. Um, first of all, I give you a brief overview. Um, if we're going to talk about numbers for the Atlantic slave trade, we're talking about 12 and a half million people, 12 and a half million Africans, men, women, and children who were forcibly taken from their homes in the continent of Africa, crammed upon ships, taken across the Atlantic, and sold into slavery for not just the rest of their lives, but the lives of their children and their children's children, and their children's children's children. Um, this trade went from the mid, let's say, 1500s until the mid 1800s. It's not until the end of the Civil War in the United States in 1865 that slavery is finished. So that's the topic that we're looking at. Um, one of the important things that I want you to get a sense for that was unfortunately not well covered, I think, in Collins or in the lecture, is um, the effect that this has had on the United States. This is something I want to work on in future courses. Um, you know, we talk about ourselves as being a country of immigrants, and much of our culture is related to immigrants, whether it's hot dogs, or even the word hamburger, right, comes from the word Hamburg, the name of a place in Germany. Um, Hot dogs are the various kinds of European or largely German sausages, like bratwurst. We have St. Patrick's Day, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, pizza. We recognize much of the European heritage of us as a culture. We rarely recognize the African uh, influences, and they are both long, deep, and profound. Um, you can't talk about American public, popular music without talking about its deep African influences. And while we often think of ourselves as a largely um, European-facing culture, or at least that's often how United States culture has been spoken of, um, I think this misses a huge part of our experience, which is that experiences of all these different people that get thrown together in the new world. And the African population is a big part of that, and slavery is the means through which it happens. So unlike the voluntary migrants who are coming from Europe, um, African, and by, African immigrants are, by and large, involuntary immigrants. They have no say in what's happening to them. Um, and so just keeping in mind that huge debt of our culture to people of African ancestry. Another point that's worth pointing out, another point that's worth recognizing um, is that um, until about the mid-1800s, for every European that came to the New World, and by New World I mean North and South America, Caribbean, there were four Africans. So that population runs deep and broad. Um, by and large, most Americans of African descent, um, they have deeper roots in this country than most of your people of European descent. Unless you've got relatives that came over with the Mayflower, um, most people of African descent have got deeper roots in this country than, than people from Europe. So it's worth keeping in mind. Um, Colin's treatment on this topic is not my favorite, but there's two things that I want you to keep an eye on. Keep an eye on his discussion of the transatlantic trade, that trade between Africa and the New World that brought people of African descent to the Americas, to South America, to the Caribbean as largely agricultural slaves. Um, 
He also talks about the way that slavery develops in Africa, and that's a little bit different and somewhat complementary complementary to the way it develops in the New World. By complementary, I don't necessarily mean good, but simply that they're working together, that they interlock. Um, this is because in Africa, um, often the people held as slaves were women, and that has to do with the way that African societies, African economies worked. Women are and have been the primary food producers in the African continent. And so w women held as slaves, essentially slave wives, they were food producers. They were producers for those people. And so they not only produce children, but they also produce food. Um, in the New World, in the United States and the Caribbean and elsewhere, um, the majority of the people held as slaves were men, and that's because of what was wanted was their labor, typically for various kinds of plantations. The, probably the big example would have been sugar. Sugar really wasn't grown in the United States, but it was grown in the Caribbean and in Brazil, and it, was, it really was what drove the trade, that profitability of sugar. Other crops were important too, indigo, which is a dye uh, used for making dye. That's the color of your blue jeans, that dark blue. That was an important crop. Tobacco was an important crop, and later cotton as well. So that's the African and the transatlantic trade. Collins also talks a bit about what he calls the Oriental trade, uh, or the Red Sea trade, and this was another slave trade that he, Collins suggests was as large as the transatlantic trade. Um, I'm not sure if that's widely agreed by other historians. Our records for that are not as good as the Atlantic slave trade. Um, so take a look at that. And then finally, David Brian Davis makes two points that I want you guys to have a sense of. Um, he talks about slavery in the United States. Now remember, we've got to keep things straight. There's, the, there's slavery in Africa. There's the procure procurement, capture of people in Africa for shipment to the New World. There's also that Oriental trade. Um, that's the African side. David Brian Davis is talking about the American side, and primarily the United States, which I, the Collins doesn't talk about too much. Um, there, uh, David Brian Davis makes, I think, two really important points that I want you to know about, and will show up on the test. One, the profound economic importance of the work of people held as slaves in the United States, right? This was hugely valuable. This created a great deal of wealth for the people that owned those slaves. So the notion that slavery was just kind of a little side game that wasn't really all that important is just simply wrong. It was at the very center of our economy and even the economies of the North, because the economies of the North, where there wasn't slavery, often um, processed things that were produced by slave labor in the South. The other big point that he makes that I think is important is he says that slavery in the New World uh, operated in two distinct ways. It was economic, in other words, it was about making money, which led to the kinds of exploitation that we associate with the slave trade, that cruelty, that working of people to death because what they, what you wanted from them was their labor. And two, it was racialized. And this might be something you hadn't thought about before, but I think it's an important point. In other words, in the new world, to be slave was to have dark skin. The distinction between free and enslaved was largely a matter of skin color. Why is this important? Well, this is the origins of racism. This is where it comes from, right? Um, so that wasn't true if you look at the Roman Empire. In the Roman Empire, many of the people held as slaves, and there were huge numbers of people held as slaves in the Roman Empire. Um, they didn't look any different than the people that held them as slave owners. There wasn't any distinction. Greeks didn't look different from Romans. Um, but in the New World, skin color becomes the real divider. And so this is the beginnings of race. So in 
as David Brian Davis will say, uh, slavery in the new world becomes racialized. Okay, again, we can discuss this further in the discussion forum.